I am a believer that great art will find its way to resonate. You know, if you make truly, truly great art and music, you will eventually find an audience, but there will be people that find it and talk about it and latch onto it. If it's truly great, it happens, you know? Yo, what's up, Jarris? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, how are you? Right on, bro, good, how are you? I'm doing well. I appreciate you doing this, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, actually, you were on my podcast like two years ago. Really? Hmm. Yeah. You had oh. just put out Damn. Oh, okay, you... nice. So it was, it was early. It was real <laughs> early on. You had, uh, yeah, you had, maybe Damn wasn't, it, it must have been out. It may be just, yeah, came it, out. Would, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have done it if it wasn't out. <laughs> <laughs> it, then it had just came out because you had another uh, song out as well that you, that you said you, you had just put out uh, and then Damn happened. So then you put yeah, that yeah. out. Yeah. 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 So uh, it's been a yeah. minute, but I've been watching uh, your career blow up in the last two years man so it's yes um, it's been a it's been a lot of ups and downs and we can we can get into all of it but. i'd love to yeah i'd love to hear about it what's been uh yeah kind of been going on since then um awesome so from what i do remember is you're from oregon is that correct yep very Born correct. in oregon yes um well we didn't really talk about what was it like growing up there i mean it's a beautiful part of the country obviously oh yeah i mean it was it was probably one of the best places I, I mean obviously i've never i've only lived there and in la so that's my <laughs> frame of reference but i've been you know all over the country and everything and yeah as far as i can tell it's it is probably one of the best places to like grow up you know uh -huh. because there's a pretty large like sense of community the people there are really really nice it's very like family oriented. There's a lot to do, but there's not too many people, you know, so yeah. it's not like super fucking crazy or whatever. I loved it. And, um, you know, the only bad thing is like the rain, which, yeah. you know, yeah, it's it rains. <laughs> but, <laughs> At least it's not uh, snowing all the time. Like you're if you're in like Chicago or something. Yeah. Or New York or, you know, that was the occasional thing for us. So. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I loved it. I I would probably, you know, at some point in the future, whenever I end up having kids or anything like that, you know, I I could back. see going back to Oregon. Yeah. yeah, at least getting like a property or something out there. You know. Sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I remember you. Uh, kind of saying you had just moved. I think you had just moved to L.A. when I talked to you last time. Yeah. Like you had yeah, been there probably. for like a month or something like yeah, that. that. Yeah, probably literally <laughs> a couple of weeks. Yeah. You're like, I just got here, literally. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, That's all yeah, you're still in of, L.A.? A lot has changed, yes. Yep, still in L.A. Um, You know, I feel like it's weird, like, looking back on that three years ago. And it's only three years, so... <laughs> It doesn't seem like a lot, but I literally feel like I was like a child or something. Back, you know? like, <laughs> well, look at you've all you've done, man. I mean, you've done so many tours. You've been all over the world, I'm sure, at least all over the states yeah, and done, Europe. Yeah, a tiny and... bit of in, tiny bit of international uh, traveling, but nothing crazy. Yeah, uh, but I mean, mainly just like I don't know. I think just something about like. I think it was also the first time that I'd really like fully moved away from home. I had like, you know, I was living in like my own apartments and stuff mm -hmm. thing, but like fully moving away from like my home base of like friends and family and kind of going to be on my own, you know, uh, yeah. that was kind of like the biggest change, you know, and then obviously everything was happening, you know, everything was kind of all happening at once with my career and stuff. So it was just like so much like at once, you know, and that kind of like, I don't know, shocking sort of like change. Yeah. It just forces you to like adapt a lot and like to just go. And I, and I, you know, and I, I feel so much better now than I did back then, you know, and I felt good then too. I just felt excited and mm -hmm. whatever, but I just feel like I've learned so much about like, Fucking, I feel like I really became like a fucking adult, you know, like <laughs> coming here and doing this and like having money for the first time in my life, like, you know, and having a fucking house and doing all this and just like, yeah, just really like coming into my own, like as a person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the kind of artistic journey that I've been on is sort of like reflective of that too, because, 
Um, while I was doing a lot of stuff, you know, while I felt like I had like an identity back then, you know, I, I realize now that I was, I was almost doing too much and I was chasing too many different genres and too many different sounds because I could. And I was just so fucking excited to make music just full time. And everybody was just eating everything up and I was just going, going, going. So I felt like because I could do every genre and could experiment and do everything and be a million different artists in one in one artist i should mm -hmm. when probably i really shouldn't have you know so that's been a big part of like kind of growing up and really realizing like doing some soul searching and growing and kind of being like damn like who who am i really like as a person and an artist you know and like an individual within this scene of music or whatever like what what am i what do i bring to the table that nobody else can bring to the table not you know that i do a million different genres and nobody can knows how to fucking describe my music because it's five million <laughs> things in one thing but like <laughs> well that's a cool thing <laughs> i mean it's, it's cool <laughs> it's cool it's just a hard path it's just like it's hard to get fans because you have one sub subsection of your fans that like this song and then i drop another song that's right goes right after that and it's completely different mm -hmm. and they don't really buy in you know so it's like i don't know and yeah of course there's you know there's people that stuck around through all my different experimenting but i i was really just i felt like i was really just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what stuck you know mm -hmm. because so much was winning and so much happening i was like fuck it yeah so much sticking <laughs> yeah i don't know why don't i try that See what happens, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just was trying so much shit, and um, and some of it worked, and some of it didn't. But, um, I I really went on this journey in the past like year specifically, um, I'll, everything kind of leading up to this, but really like focusing on it in the past year of like, what it you know, what is my sound? What is the Jarrus sound? And how do I make like an album that is. That is do it. That's like, you know, because you go listen to all the greatest rock and metal albums and stuff and the shit mm -hmm. I grew up listening to and was inspired by and everything as like, you know, you listen to those and they sound like one long song. You know, it's like you listen to whatever name in name any great band, you know, and right. you listen to their song. And you're like, oh, yep, that's a this type of song or that's a this sound. They have a sound that's very identifiable, you know, mm -hmm. and a mistake I made. um back when I first moved to LA, you know, was just having way too many different sounds and, and nobody knew what I was or what I wasn't. And I mean, I didn't even know what I was and what I wasn't, you know, I was just mm -hmm. everything. So I really was like, did the soul searching this past year. And like, and as I've been working on this album to really find like, what do I sound like? Who am I? And if somebody's telling their friends about my music, you know, let them be able to describe it in like a fucking sentence, you know, like okay. what is, what is it? What yeah. is sound, you know? And, um, and then of course, part of that was me trying to like push the rock and metal genre forward, like in, in ways that maybe, uh, people aren't ready for. <laughs> and well, I yeah, think you I, were doing I, like this really modern, like cool, like you were like revamping rock and roll music for yeah for and, this, and, the way I saw it. I mean, it kind of just plateaued and then, you know, things were happening like in the emo pop punk world that kind of made this resurgence, but like the, the yeah. rock and roll, like more like that, just active rock was st still kind of just doing this like, par like, you yeah. know, sleepy, just boring kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. Of course I, of course I wanted to still, uh, upon entering this new phase, I wanted to still maintain my sense of excitement and boundary pushing and everything. But it was more it was more so a question of like, OK, you know, I'm the, I'm the type of person where, you know, I can play every instrument. I love a lot of genres of music. Mm -hmm. I have to limit myself. I have to actually <laughs> put a limit on myself of what I'm allowed to do. Otherwise, I'll just do everything or anything because I can. And so I found it much more interesting and fun and a challenge and and challenge challenges me to grow to give myself like all right, I'm in the sandbox and I have a few tools in the sandbox and I see other tools outside the sandbox that are tempting, you know, and I might normally want to grab those 
but like I have to just force myself like how creative can I get with this with what with what is in this sandbox you know like how can I use everything in here to build the biggest masterpiece I can build but I can only use what's right here in this sandbox yeah. so that's been really fun you know it's been a fun kind of challenge and it's led me to making my best music that I've ever made and I'm really really glad that I made the choice to like go okay rock and metal fans like you want me you want me to make a fucking metal album all right fine you win <laughs> You know, I'll make you your fucking metal album, but I'm going to show you how it's really fucking done. And I'm going to show you how you really still maintain the spirit of rock and metal while also doing all of the things that you can possibly do to push the genre forward. And um, and of course, I've only really dropped like one song so far from this new era. But as as time goes on, you know, this this vision will become more and more obvious to people. And the more I talk about it and the more songs get revealed, people will uh -huh. be like, Oh, you know, they might hear when the doctor comes and be like, yeah, you know, it's, it's cool. It's an awesome song and the riff's cool. And it sounds like Metallica, but like, it's not like super crazy. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I, I agree. It's not my craziest song. It's not <laughs> just fully show, you know, the entire picture, but the more songs I drop and the more, you know, more build up into this album than when I finally drop the album next year. Um, you know, people are going to be like, oh, that's I what get. Yeah, I, that's cool. Yeah, that but, must be difficult just because you are you, you, you can play a lot of instruments and, and you if you're only set to like, OK, you can only use these five things. Right. I mean, you're like, oh, you're probably thinking like, oh, but if I added this from here, like I already hear something from this instrument that I could just go grab, but it's not in the sandbox. So what am I going to yeah. do here? Yeah, yeah, that well, must have been an interesting project or, you know, kind of exercise. Yeah. And one one limit, one one rule that I've had for this album is there has to be live drums and guitar on every song in some type of way. It doesn't mean the whole song has to be live drums and guitar. It can. And some songs, mm -hmm. some songs are just full, you know, fully like that the whole time. And some aren't. But that was one thing I had to be like, all right, if I'm going to make a rock and metal album and people are going to see me as a rock and metal artist and I'm going to really make a splash in this genre, I'm going to have to give them a bone. You know, I'm going to have to. And also, you know, it's kind of me making the album that I would have wanted to hear when I was 14, just getting into rock and metal. And, you know, like, yeah, it wouldn't have all been fucking computer noise. And do I think uh, do I think it's possible to make a rock and metal project with no live drums and guitar? Actually, yes, I do think that's possible. <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, definitely. I don't think I don't think I don't know if people are ready to accept that as the truth. <laughs> and um, and I'm sure at some point, eventually, I'll drop an album where I just want to fucking mind fuck people as hard as I possibly can. And that will be fun to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for now, I, I really wanted to make something that felt timeless but also boundary pushing and really like ties in like who i am as an artist and why i even fell in love with rock and metal in the first place you mm -hmm. know and, and reach back you know i part of the process part of the preparation or pre-production if you will you know of uh getting ready for this album was like me just going back and listening to every album front to back that i first listened to when i got into rock and metal like the you know the the multiple projects that i like had on my fucking what ipod touch or whatever the fuck yeah yeah you know in uh freshman year and listening to all the and just like infatuated by like this genre music that i was had just now been getting exposed to you know and just like going back and listening to those and just thinking about like what is what is the feeling here like what what did I feel about this that was so enticing and why did I feel that way? And how can I make something that gives a 14 year old kid now that same feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. So what yeah, were those, was... what were some of those albums? Cause I know obviously you <clears throat> kind of, you, you started doing a bunch of covers that were doing really, really well early on. And I sure. know last time we talked, uh, you were kind of saying like, those you'd spark ideas from some of those songs that you liked when you were growing up. But like, 
what were the albums that you went back and you're like, okay, I want to listen to this album all the way through and kind of pull those feelings up. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of like Avenged Sevenfold, you know, okay. like self-titled album and Nightmare. Nightmare was the first, I know it's like a later album, but Nightmare was the first CD I ever bought. Really? Uh, yeah. God, Nightmare. I feel old. <laughs> yeah. first cd i ever bought was that and that's that was kind of getting towards the tail end of like when cds were even a thing but i wanted to i just wanted to buy the cd you know right right um and you know iowa slipknot you know fucking cra- that was like the first time i had ever been like really introduced to like some real dark heavy fucking shit and i was like whoa this is insane and hearing yeah, stories yeah. about Corey taylor like fucking cutting himself in the vocal booth and throwing up in a bucket and shit and i was just like holy fuck this is so crazy it was so <laughs> fascinating you know and yeah, yeah um uh lamb of god you know ashes of the wake uh that was one of the first metal albums i really got into it was like actual metal album you know whatever i mm-hmm. could say like lincoln park and stuff and that's new metal or what you know whatever but like what a metal fan would consider to be like real metal, you know, 100%. Yeah, Lamb yeah. of God, uh, Ashes of the Wake, you know, there's a, there's a bunch, but System of a Down, Toxicity. Yeah. You know, that album. Uh, so just a, a handful, a bunch of them, but um, I really just like, yeah, I, I really just dove back into Black Album. It was another mm. one I, I listened to. And uh, that was one I got introduced to when I was younger, you know, kind of like your dad introduces you to metal music through the fucking black. Yeah. Belt or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, sure I'm not the only kid with that experience. Um, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause but, your dad was a drummer, right? That, and that's what you started off doing. playing drums. Yes. Yep. Good memory. Good memory. Or you wrote that down and you got it written down somewhere. <laughs> uh, well, but, a little bit of the both. <laughs> no, he I did have to re I did have to re research, man. I'm not going to just come in here. And yeah, ask you all the same questions. Um, yeah. that wouldn't be fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, because your dad was a drummer, and then you started playing drums. I remember like at thirteen or something. And mom was yeah. a singer, and they kind of met in a band. Did they play in a band together? Um, yes. They, they just in band bands. Together. Yeah, they played. They they were in separate bands, but they also played in a band together for a little while. Um, not too long because you know they didn't waste that much time uh, having me after they met. So. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so yeah. they were they were just doing it like once they had you the did they they once get, they had they me to kind playing? of stop I, they they played for a few years uh, mm-hmm. into my childhood. I remember being like four or five years old and they would still gig every now and again. But um, that's cool. It definitely, like you know, at a certain point, it became just like yeah, we just can't do this anymore. Because I mean, how stoked are they for you? Like you're doing what they. I mean, if, were doing. I mean, they're super proud, obviously, and they were always yeah. super supportive and like you know believed in me and you know it's just whatever it's in my blood you know yeah yeah. and um you know i went down a bunch of different rabbit holes when i was a kid trying sports and whatever and music was just the one that really stuck Mm -hmm. and i think partly because i was just so good at it right away like i mean first day i ever picked up the drums i could like play the drum i could play it i could play a beat you know and that's crazy um so i think like i don't know i think it's as a kid you just gravitate to whatever you're like special at you know sure yeah. so i felt all like special because you know i was so good and i was so good you know at like 14 years old i was just like wiping the floor with like all the older kids you know and like my class and stuff and mm-hmm. i just was like yo this is who i am you know because i was getting attention you know for like the first mm-hmm. time in my life and being like the best at something you know so um yeah that's that's really what got me started was was drums and then and then picked up everything else you know obviously after that as you did because yeah start getting good at one thing you're like oh curious now about guitar or whatever the fuck right know? right right and you've uh-huh. sang before that too i remember you saying yeah i was always before. good at singing you know i kind of yeah. had the natural whatever like i had good pitch you know i could hear i could hear notes you know sure um, um yeah well last time we spoke i mean damn was a huge deal obviously and then you had wrote or you had worked with uh jacoby and the guys from papa roach and you were gonna re- you were about to release or you were you know, in the works of releasing the the last resort cover. So we that's kind of where our conversation left off. And you had, you know, the moment with, you know, Chad <laughs> of Nickelback. So I'm sure yeah. there's got to be uh, like two lives that you've lived <laughs> just in those there, years. There has, so, yeah, so I'm curious has. if you would kind of pick up where, you know, that all kind of. Yeah, I'll kind of spin the tail a little bit. So, yeah, yeah you know, all that all that happened and like whatever this was like the heyday of like tiktok and shit blowing up on tiktok and this was like right at the apex where it was like tiktok was really popular 
but it, but like mainstream like normies or whatever were like just now picking it up and like there's just like a flood of people going to TikTok yeah. even though it's already like, really popular it, like you know I'm doing yeah that thing. this was like the time period where everybody started to adopt TikTok sure. <laughs> I was like right before that or like and that apex of like when it happened you know uh -huh. um and so you know that that led me down that initial journey um very quickly and it was awesome and it was super fun and then. You know, as you're kind of going down the journey, you're like, all right, well, fuck, I need like a booking agent now so I can like play shows and I need uh, this. And I, you know, you start just going down the rabbit hole of like, be, you know, mm -hmm. okay, I'm in the music industry now. I'm in LA. I'm meeting people. I'm, you know, whatever. And I'm, I'm in the scene. People are DMing me and, you know, just kind of unravels sort of naturally like that a little bit. And you just kind of grow slowly. And then, um, you know, shortly after that, kind of the last little, uh, exclamation point at the end of the sentence of that phase of my career was ollie oliver sykes you know from bring me mm -hmm. the horizon hitting me up about yeah. doing the my heart remix mm -hmm. tiktok thing or whatever in my usual kind of reloaded way and i was like well yeah duh, I'll, i will do that <laughs> sure. so we did that and that was another big moment and that was kind of really like that kind of put a bow tie on that era um mm -hmm. and then i dropped like a little ep which yeah. was fun you know and i i like you know there's a few songs i like on that but it was a lot of you know kind of older demos that i was finishing and you know it's just a whole kind of a mixed bag and then i got to work on like my album all right i'm gonna make this album and i started playing some of my first shows you know and um this is also after covid you know it's kind of like tail end of covid stuff like shows are starting to get booked again you know yeah barely. we were like in the midst of it i think last time i talked to you i don't even yeah shows yeah, really 20, happen yeah yeah and no, you were, were you kind of hinted at it now. You're like, I have an EP. Like, so I think you knew that you're gonna put out the yeah. EP, and then you were talking about wanting to do an album. I don't know if you had even started any work on that. I album can't remember. I, I'm sure yeah. I had. I'm sure I had a few songs started or whatever. Some things started, but um, yeah, it was kind of like all this type of phase where it was just like really getting off the ground and then i played a bunch of my first music festivals and that was just like a dream come true you know sure. like i was so cool to you know because i played in bands all my life and everything and you know you only we well the maximum amount of people i only ever played for was like 200 people or something maybe mm -hmm. and then like uh you know and then walking out to my first festival and i'm there's like five thousand people there and i'm like oh <laughs> You know, and it's so fun and exciting. And I'm just, you know, whatever, signing autographs and shit at the barrier. And I don't know, it was just so special. And it was so, it was just like that. I used to, I remember I used to get so like annoyed. Like I was trying, you know, I tried so hard to get people to show up to the, to my band shows or whatever growing up and, you know, to look out and the play for an empty bar of my parents, you know, or whatever, which I had done a bunch of times, like, I just it's such a bummer and all you want to do is just play in front of a big crowd and so you know to have all this happen and then I jump right in I'm playing in front of a huge crowd people know the word I was like damn you know and everybody's doing the thing and I was just like holy fuck man this is so this is like just crazy you know yeah dream come true type type shit uh and then you know and then that that, was, that kind of really like unfolded throughout the rest of that year 2021 uh and then I got booked for my first tour with mm -hmm. Falling Curse. Which yeah, was that's huge. Awesome. I mean, it was the best first tour I could have asked for, honestly. Uh, it was so cool. And that was in 2022, beginning of 2022. So I did a bunch of festivals and stuff, but that was kind of like the first time playing live. And now that shows were kind of um, in full swing again, they started. Yeah, you, you know, that was a great tour. I think you were on with Wage War, right? In the California yeah. system? Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. My so, buddy Cody's in the band Wage War. Oh yeah, Cody. I know Cody. Yeah. yeah. Figured you so, get each other. <laughs> yeah. So uh I mean it was just awesome. It was like awesome tour and it was so fun to be on tour for the first time. You know, I just yeah. had so many such a big freshman year, you know, of just shit. And I was still dropping sing, you know, random singles and stuff and whatever. But um, you know, then in, in 2022, kind of the big uh, fucking knife in my heart happened. <laughs> and that was when, you know, my, my label I was on. So this is like a lot of what I've gotten attention for talking about recently. Um, and you know, my label I was with, I was with 300 entertainment was the first label. Yeah. And, you know, for what it was worth, I had a relatively good experience there. It wasn't horrible or anything. 
Um, but that was also because I was just on fire <laughs> for a little <laughs> while. So, you know, whatever, hard to hard to have a bad time when shit is going like that. And I'm having all these big firsts, you know. Uh, but my label got bought out by Warner Brothers. So I got absorbed into this huge legal buyout situation and I became one of 300 fucking artists or whatever, you know, in a major label, which is not something I ever signed up to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And that really, that really slowed everything down dramatically. Um, And, you know, it's typical music industry bullshit, you know, I, and I just got fucking wrapped up in it. Lots of red tape, lots of um, shitty stuff, to say the least, you know, and just like a bunch of a bunch of bullshit, you know, basically. And that really put a damper and a and a slow down everything. I I ended up dropping the album around the time of that first tour. So kind of just before this had happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and at the time I was relatively proud of it but in retrospect you know it was kind of a a symptom of me doing too much and doing everything because i thought i could do everything and having a million different songs and blah 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 so Mm -hmm. um so that kind of fizzled out and then the label thing happened and that was kind of a fucking bummer and then i'm got all these problems and it's a bunch of music industry bullshit i'm uh you know whatever going through the whole thing yeah. So and, so when you're on the label, you're I mean you're on 300 and then they get bought, right? And then are you just kind of thrown into this label now? So you, your what contract like gets absorbed by? Yeah. So them. my whole team gets blown up. You know, I'm all with a yeah. whole different set of people now. Right. 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 right and right. you know, I'm getting thrown on people's desks that have a million other things going on. They don't really care about the small artist that's still building or just starting or whatever. You know. So it just mm-hmm. just a it was just a a nightmare of a situation it was just it's it just slowed everything the best way i can put it is it was just like fucking walking through molasses you know it just slowed everything down so much and then oh well we can't release anything for the next this long because then this and and then i was just like well fuck i might as well just like go away for a while until this is all sorted out and i knew i was gonna leave and blah 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 so basically you know up until when the darkness comes uh had recently come out Mm-hmm. You know, I was pretty much MIA for, you know, a year, a little over a year. Not yeah. Really uh, not MIA, so, but yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. And, but you did, were, you were recently on a tour, right? That that you just did? Um, Somewhat. I mean, I did. So I did the Falling Universe tour. Yeah. And then, and then later that year, I did the Corn tour, which was fucking awesome. Oh, maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah, I did the Corn tour. And then I've done a, a few small runs of like a couple shows here and there with a few bands. Um, okay. My friend stuff you know just random random stuff but no, no nothing i would really classify as like a real tour you know just kind of a few like one-off shows and stuff yeah yeah yeah. so but those are really the only two like actual tours i've done yeah because you're if you're on a major right now you said like you know they're dealing with it was warner that absorbed it yeah it was warner yeah, yeah. so i mean they've got whatever everybody i mean literally everybody any, yeah li- literally any band is gonna be yeah, they're gonna they're gonna Man, look over pop artist, rapper, you know, there's just a million different things. So yeah, it'd be know. hard to kind of cut through and have them be like, okay, we're ready to like, you know, focus on yeah, and whatever. What look, doing. look, companies get fucking bought out, whatever. You know, like I mm-hmm. uh I would sell my company for hundreds of millions of dollars also. <laughs> right. Like right. I don't blame anybody for do- for doing it, but it just was a symptom of the of the thing. And I, I was a small enough artist. It didn't have too much going on at the moment to really become any kind of a priority. And and then there's all there's the mess in general of of a giant corporation buyout and layoffs mm-hmm. and switching and stabs and offices. And, you know, I'm sure it was just super fucking complicated and, you know, whatever. So um, anyways, I got thrown into a less than ideal situation and sure. whatever. I'm not fucking crying about it, but that's what it was. And mm-hmm. um, and so I wanted out uh and i knew i'm like i was like fuck it you know i might as well just go dark you know and i and this is also the same time period where i was realizing like all right i really need to like figure out what my sound is and like become the artist that like i'm really meant to be you know so i'm just gonna go away i'm gonna work on my shit i'm gonna go on a fucking journey you know and really look inwards and try to 
level up my artistry and become like the best artist and person I can be while this fucking bullshit gets sorted sorted out. And I knew it was going to take forever to get sorted out. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go away. And so I did that, went away. Of course, you know, uh, some noticed, some didn't. <laughs> you know, I've, I, you know, of course, I had the plenty of messages. Are you still alive? Blah, blah, blah. You know, yes. Yeah, that must have been hard to do, though, right? I mean, because you, you were kind of, you got your big break essentially out of the internet and TikTok. Yeah, and posting on the internet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be honest, it actually was just, it felt so good to just not have to fucking stress about it because it becomes so like, you know, fuck, if I don't get drop a viral TikTok for this song, like this song isn't going to do anything. You know, it's like yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so reliant and you just get so like wrapped up in it. And I realized that it was just the wrong. I was thinking about it so backwards. And of course, I put I put a lot of energy into the music. It wasn't like skimping. You know, I wasn't cut it, cutting it short on the music. I was trying really hard to make the best music I could. But I was a lot more focused on the social media aspect of it because I'm like, fuck, well, if I just go viral, then fucking the song's going to do well. So fuck it. Well, and, yeah, I mean, it does kind of go right hand in hand in the yeah, you know, and it's true. Way. Yeah, it's true. But the problem is it's not that's not I hated being an artist that had to post a viral video in order for your song to get attention. Like, I just wanted to. I wished I could have just dropped a song that was an amazing song and just have people run with it, you know, rather right. than like have to do some gimmick viral bullshit to do it. And so it really just like flipped my whole perspective. And I was like, I need to just focus on making the greatest art I can possibly make, making the greatest album I can possibly make, making the greatest visuals I can possibly make, and just really focus on the greatness of the art guiding ev everything and then put that out, out there in the world and people are either going to run with it or they're not but i'm done with the fucking bullshit gimmicks i'm done with the fucking chasing the viral dragon and trying my hardest to go viral it doesn't mean i'm never gonna post on tiktok i post on fucking social media punny you know for this new song and everything and there's been a right. few videos but the difference is, uh, is i'm not like just putting all my fucking energy and focus and just like thinking about how can I rig the algorithm to go viral for the mm -hmm. song. And I'm more so just like, I'm just going to make the best songs I can make and the best art I can make and build my brand and my sound in only the way I can. And then um, let that grow over time, you know, mm -hmm. and just really trying to shift my perspective onto the right things. And, um, and, and to, and obviously it, it's working because right, yeah. this they, song, you know, has done soup. I mean, it's, it's by far my biggest song in the past, like year, year or two, you know, and it's like, it's, it's fucking moving the needle. It's working. So it feels good to have that reassurance and to, to feel like, Oh, okay. Like the year I took off was worth it, you know? And right. It, it wasn't like you put it out and then you got no traction. It was like, Oh damn it. Did exactly. The well, worst fuck, thing ever. Know? Did I, should I have not? Yeah. Done. Which, what I did. You know, and obviously, you know, I'm independent now too. So there's like the, all those kind of doubts in your head. Like, well, you think, I mean, I knew that like, look, my, whatever my success um, is, is just directly tied to my actions. I knew that the fucking labels weren't really doing anything, you know? <laughs> so, um, so I believe that it, that I would be fine, but there's still like the voice in the back of your head that like, well, what if you just had a big fucking ego and maybe they were really doing more shit behind the scenes to make these songs pop than you really thought. And, you know, to have like the first one, you know, just go crazy. It's like, well, yeah, I, I thought so, you know? Right. Thought, right. Yeah. Yeah. Validating what you already, you knew, yeah. but you could, I, yeah, definitely talk to yourself out of it in your head. Like, Oh, well maybe they are. Yeah. Maybe this was a bit of their pulling, but I mean, if you go back to the very beginning, right. You, when you didn't have that, you still yeah. had that. This yeah, it just that drew him in initially. I am a believer that great art will find its way to resonate. You know, if you make yeah. truly, truly great art and music, you will eventually find an audience, but there will be people that find it and talk about it and latch onto it. If it's truly great, it happens. You know, mm -hmm. most people 
all they want to think about is how to rig the algorithm to make themselves go viral when they're not even getting it right in the first place. They're making a fucking mid ass song that's just not that good or, you know, attention worthy in the first place. And then they're just trying to gimmick their way into virality so that the song can do well when it's just they should really just focus on making great art. And if you look at especially in the rock and metal scene, you know, most of the bands that have blown up in the past couple of years, you know, the big ones, whatever, like even the ones that have blown up on TikTok, like Bad Omens and Sleep Token and shit, like they don't even post on TikTok. <laughs> like no. they're not even posting there, you know, because they just make great. And obviously they've been around, you know, they've been at it for a little while. So they already had a little bit of a fan base and, you know, a little bit of growth already. But like, you know, the point is, is that they made great art and it found its way to resonate with people because it was great. Right. And, and that's something that's really important and something that I just have totally shifted my focus towards focusing on is just like making the best fucking art I can make and people will find it and it will it will resonate and it will find a home. So. Yeah. yeah, and if you and if you happen to land on a viral moment on TikTok or whatever, yeah, then you'll have happen. yeah, and you'll have all the other stuff that people can go then if if they didn't know who Jarris Johnson was and then they see this TikTok or whatever this viral video for something, then they go back and go, oh wow, he's got a bunch of great songs. Yeah, you know, look around for you can try. I've had I've had shit that I thought was for sure gonna go viral that didn't go viral and then shit that I would have never thought would go viral, go insanely viral, you know? So <laughs> sometimes you can try and try and try and you can be smart about it and whatever, have good ideas and stuff. But like at the end of the day, bro, you know, it's called viral for a reason is because the it has to fucking spread like a virus and mm -hmm. you're only one person. So you can't force something to spread. You just can't. Sure. It, yeah. You cannot brute force something to spread. People have to spread it. So at the end of the day, all you can really focus on is what you can do. And the best thing that you can do is make something great. Yes, I love that. Um, but real quick, I'm just curious about the album and everything. So you have the one song out um, during this time period where you kind of just went dark on social media and everything or just kind of stayed away from it. Was that when you were looking for your sound and finding out who you are and how is somebody going to describe me in, in a sentence to their friends if they've never heard my music and the, the, that whole, you know, just creating this album. How much time did that, that must've been uh, pretty hard process. to do, right? I mean, to, yeah, it was to a process. really it dive started, in. Yeah, it started when we rented, we rented out this Airbnb, like a cabin up in uh, Yosemite for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. just to like do a bit, you know, me and a few of my closest friends and collaborators just, doing a camp about like let's just go make a bunch of shit and see what happens you know see where it leads us mm -hmm. and it led us to a bunch of different things you know and i felt like it was like starting to come together a little bit and then i was showing people and i had this talk with this one uh another uh, producer buddy of mine and you know he was kind of like he was like there's some cool stuff here but like i'm i'm telling you man like you can do better you know you can do better than this i'm like God, you're right. I I have been, I know that I know I can. So I really, so that really like started leading me down the journey of like, you know, that was when I really started asking myself those questions. Like, okay, what's, what's the deal here? And then I, I really made this like one song. Um, It's a song called welcome to Valhalla. And, um, and that was kind of the turning point where I was like, Oh, this is the fucking sound. This is who, this is something only I can fucking do this. And, and it was also, and I was also like playing, like trying to like play a lot of my favorite video games and watch like a bunch of my favorite movies and um, read a bunch of books and just like really take in like all this art and all this shit that I love and just like embody it within my music, you know? And, um, yeah, so that was kind of like around the turning point. And then and then once I had that, once I had that light bulb kind of go off, it all just started falling into place. And then I just started making a bunch of shit. And I was just like making shit every day, every day, every day. Just like new shit, new shit. And just like now that I had, oh, this is the direction. These are the these are the tools in the toolbox. Run with it and see uh -huh. how many different versions of this direction I can make. And that's what that's what led to the album and now i have you know i'm about 
I'm about 70, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the way through the album. I'm still still trying to wrap up a few songs and I still got a little bit more writing to do on a few songs, but a lot of it's done. Wow. Is that Welcome to Paul's song on the album? Yeah, it will be. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't think I've seen that one come through. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's not out. But uh, yeah, it's it's. I mean, people will. <laughs> it's it's one of the songs, one of the many, but one of definitely the songs on the album that you you will not be able to ignore. You know, it is, it is that memorable. You know. <laughs> okay. So you knew, did you obviously you know you know that and was that a reason why you didn't want to put it out yet? Well, yeah. I mean, it's just big. It it really encapsulates the album to me like okay. in, in, in a lot of ways. And so, yeah, it just, I want to, I want to wait, wait for the right time to drop Got that it. one to people. And, you know, I have an insane music video idea that I need to do. And yeah. It was just, there's just some shit I gotta, I gotta do for it. But um, yeah, it, there's just, that was a turning point and going on from there, it just led me to just like this fucking renaissance of, making a bunch of shit for the album and that that's when i really you know that's when the title of the album came that's when ever just the whole vision came together there and uh yeah it felt good and then i i feel like i'm really sitting on something now that stands toe to toe with those albums that i listened to when i was 14 and 15 getting into the genre and like I just that was my goal. So I wanted to make an album that I felt like rose to the greatness of what I perceived to be the greatest of rock and metal. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've done that or I'm doing that because it's not fully done yet. So I love that. Yeah. And I, look, I think your Twitter handle is something like or like in your Twitter bio, you say something like you want to be the most influential artist in like rock metal at some point like you don't know if, when it's gonna happen but yeah i will, I dead, will. I'm, but, it, but i'm going I, to be this i love yeah, that. yeah <laughs> I, I just know i mean and obviously people are gonna be like he has a, such a big fucking ego or whatever but um who cares i guess uh you know <laughs> I, I really i really do know and of course you know there's mo always more than one you know there's not right. just one one artist that's the influential artists and none of the other ones have any influence obviously that's not fucking true right right but, um i just believe so much in myself and what i'm doing right now that like i just i understand i feel like i truly understand what makes rock and metal great mm -hmm. and i see a very big void in bands and people that are taking advantage of that and truly rising to what makes rock and metal great. Of course, there's plenty of good bands that play really impressive riffs and they're technically very amazing musicians and all of that type of shit. But just being a technically amazing music musician to me does not fully encapsulate what it means to make a great rock and metal project. That is that is not my my view of it, and that's my view. You know, I, whatever everyone's gonna have their view. That's my view. So, mm -hmm. um, I want rock and metal to rise and conquer and win because, you know, one of the reasons that you get into something is because you feel like there's a large group of people that you can identify with, and there's a big community you can join and be a part of, and you know, so to see up until very recently you know, rock and metal has kind of just done this for a long time. And the numbers of people that are a part of this community dwindling and dwindling. And really only in the past like couple of years, does it feel like, Ooh, they're kind of like going back up now a little bit. And like, now it feels like there's a little bit of more energy and excitement going on. I love that. And I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of that, mm -hmm. but I still think, I still think we got a long ways to go from like when we used to be way up fucking here and all these metal bands were, you know, there's so many metal bands in like the 2000s, late 90s and early 2000s that were actually going number one on Billboard. Like that was right. how popular metal was. Like stadium and, bands. I mean, yeah, like massive, like, you yeah. know, whatever, like name any of them that were like actually dominating the charts with metal music, like actual metal music. So, you know, I would love to see a world in which uh, rock and metal artists 
can climb up to dominate like that again. And I think it will happen. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to do it at some point. And, um, and I think there are a few others that have the potential to do it in the next few years, honestly, including yeah. me. So, it's awesome. um, yeah, I just, I want to see it. I want to see it rise, uh, to, to that level again. And, um, I think in order to do that, I just think you need to really understand what making great inspired rock and metal music sounds like. And to me, there's not a lot of it out there. There's a little bit of it and there's starting to be more of it, but there's still a ways to go to me. And um, and so I just want to do my part for the scene and the community and just try to be an advocate for this genre of music in the biggest way possible by making my version of this music. Yeah, and I think you're killing it. Uh, I'm curious with the... You know, now that you're independent, it probably makes it easier to you because you can make your own decisions, put music out whenever you want. Like, is that been pretty freeing? Yeah, it's a relatively new thing, you know, as well, uh, because whatever kind of just really happened. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So even when you put out When the Darkness Comes, that was still part of you're still under the. No, 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 no. no. Okay. That was independent. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, but still, I mean, whatever. I put out when the doctor's comes like three three weeks ago or something. So yeah, it hasn't been long. But I was just curious. Like, I didn't know if you're like actually this literally just happened and that's this. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> it did recently happen. So I mean, I love. I I I truly. I truly at this point advocate for ninety nine percent of artists to just be independent because you just don't need to buy into the major label system even if you want help and support and money and funding or whatever there's so many different ways to slice the cake at this point Mm -hmm. that like there's just no reason there's just no reason to sign with like a ginormous corporation for your music i mean there's just no reason there's no benefit so yeah i i do love it that's awesome jaris thank you man so much for for chatting with me again it's awesome to like i said see your career like yeah you know, thank you bro blow up and uh, i have one more question even though you've pretty much been giving advice throughout this entire thing but i asked you this last time i'm gonna ask again if you have any advice for aspiring artists maybe something's changed in the last three years since we yeah talked. i mean my, <laughs> my my advice uh which i've already kind of touched on but just to double down and reiterate would be to focus on making the greatest art that you can make for yourself, not for anybody else, not for a certain audience of people, not to go viral on TikTok, but like truly you as an artist within yourself, making something for your soul and making it as great and as good as you can make it and make the thing that only you can make. You know, that is that is it. And don't fucking worry about TikTok or social media, whatever you obviously you should post on it. Obviously you should put your art on it. Obviously you can, um, you know, whatever, think of a million different ways to market the song or anything, but genuinely just focus on making the greatest art that you can make and the rest will follow. Bring me the bad word, yeah.